I'm Brock and welcome back to more Pixels. In this video, we'll have a look at everything that we accomplished or tried to accomplish over the past three weeks since the last video. I didn't get as much done as I would have liked as my sister was visiting for two of the weeks and as a group we all had our university graduation. Something that I worked on creating was a gravity switcher. I followed a Blackthorn prod tutorial on how to create it and it was actually super simple. The reason I didn't consider this such a success is because it didn't work the way I wanted. It has some issues like the player not always flipping correctly. Saying that, we still did make a bit of progress but also attempted a few things that didn't necessarily work but have given us an idea of how we can do it in the future. With work on the project being slow, I started out with something that I knew wouldn't be super difficult which would help me get back into doing some work. I created moving platforms that just move between the defined points. This was super easy to create and was just telling the script which point is next and using a vector3.move towards to create the system. Currently the platform is just a white sprite, but we were thinking of possibly making it a forklift so that it makes a bit more sense in the game. The next thing I worked on was reworking the buttons a little bit. With one of the levels that I designed, the button needs to be able to close doors as well as open them. With what had been previously programmed, it could only open them. So I quickly reworked that, which was super easy as I had already done something similar for the lever. After this, I worked on another new mechanic for the game, being the teleporter. This was something that I did have a few weird issues with, like the teleporter not teleporting to the other pads, but to its own, even though it was set to the other. After a bit of fiddling, I managed to get it working. I can't wait for the teleporter to have some art and animations, and I think that it could look really cool. Another thing that I reworked was the camera follow. Initially, I thought it was working really well, and that's because it was, until you moved upwards on a level. The script that I created was set to position the character in the middle of the screen. This was an issue when you got to somewhere where the limits of the camera position were no longer a thing, and the player was perfectly centred. I added a vector 3 called Offset, which fixes the issue, but also creates another issue that I will need to fix in the future. The issue it creates is when the player jumps, the camera moves with it, which makes it so you can't see the floor, which just means you're doing a blind jump and you will not make the platform most of the time. With this really being the time of reworks, I started improving the player controller a bit. After watching a GDC talk by Matt Thorson, the creator of Celeste, there were some improvements we wanted to make to the game. One of these being the jump system. Every good platformer game has a system where the longer you hold the jump button, the higher you jump, and if you just tap it, you only make a small bounce. That's what I worked on implementing. With getting that into the game, the player controller feels a lot better, but there are still improvements I want to make in the future to the player controller. Some of these things include being able to jump for a short time after moving off a platform as it makes the jumps a little easier and more forgiving if you jump a little bit too late. Now we get to the point of attempting things and them not working like I wanted them to. This may be because I did rush them a little bit and I have definitely learned from it. One of the first things that I tried to create was a crusher like hydraulic press but faster to create something that could destroy boxes if the player wasn't careful. I initially set out to create this through code but I ran into issues trying to get the arm to scale correctly. It wasn't scaling correctly, which caused me to get frustrated and give up. I was probably making some mistake that I didn't realise, but I know I can create this system super easy through animation, but I wanted to try to make it so that it could be used in multiple different height options, and being done completely through animation, it wouldn't give me this option. I went back to the scales that I tried to make for the Brackies game jam, but again, I still had no luck. From attempting it again, I do have a few more ideas of how I could approach it, and I will try them in the future. I did however sort of create a seesaw type scale. It works in the sense that when the player is on one side it tilts, but when you have a box on either side it balances out even if one box has a larger mass. I would love to be able to do both types of scales in the future as it would allow some for some really interesting puzzles, I just need to figure out how I can create them both. Something that I worked on creating was a gravity switcher. I followed a Blackthorn Pro tutorial on how to create it, and it was actually super simple. The reason I don't consider this a success is because it didn't completely work. It has some issues, like the player not always flipping back the correct way, and the arrow above the player not flipping either. And we also don't really know how we want it to work. We don't know if it should affect just the current player, or everything including the inactive players and also collectible boxes. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment. Something that I had seen a lot about was rule tiles. I started to try to set it up in our project, but because of how a tile set is, it was a bit confusing. Because we have a line on the tile, which goes on the inside of the level as the floor, it was a bit hard to get set up to face the correct way. And with getting the top and bottom tiles to work, it was a pain, as they both have the exact same parameters for when they would be placed, which was also the case for the two types of corner tiles. 
it is very possible I was just doing something wrong, which caused the issue, but hopefully we can get it working soon. That's everything that's been done since last time. I'm looking forward to getting back into working more on this project after having about two weeks off with not doing much on the project at all. We want to thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the future. Our social media accounts will be linked in the description if you'd like to check them out. I will be starting to post on them more often with some of the things that I work on through the weeks, between videos. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe as it would mean a lot to us. Thank you so much for watching, we really appreciate it, and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.